Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game from the women's section of the FIDE Grand Swiss. We have a game from the penultimate round. Vaishali uh, is facing Tan Jong-gi, a former women's world champion. Um, uh, she reigned in 2017 and she's uh, currently reigning as the women's rapid world champion. Uh, so wonderful game and uh, interestingly both of them qualified for the for the candidates tournament but uh, it's the, the game most of you requested even though all of um, uh, the, the, the games were re really really wonderful. Uh, so let's check it out why Shali has the white pieces and she opens with pawn to e4. We have pawn to c5, knight f3, pawn to d6 and d4. So challenging the Sicilian by opening up the position. We have captures, captures, knight to f6, knight to c3 and uh, sorry. Uh, knight to c3, knight to c6, and bishop to g5. This is the uh, Richter Rauser variation of the classical Sicilian with bishop to d7. And now uh, it's a pretty standard position, uh, more than a couple of thousand games in the database. Queen to d2 is the most uh, common move here. It's been played pretty much by everyone. Ariantari, for example, played it against Magnus Carlsen uh, in 2020 in Norway chess. He lost that game, but, uh, you know, it, it, everyone plays it but here we have a very very rare line only been played a handful of times captures on c6 bishop captures bishop captures on f6 g captures and bishop to b5 only a few games in the database where black usually replies by capturing the bishop or fianchettoing the bishop to g7 it's not really even a fianchetto as the uh, pawn structure has been uh, ruined uh, but instead we have rook to g8 and it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game so uh tanjongi says all right thank you for the semi-open g file and if you capture on c6 i will also claim the semi-open b file so okay we have castles by vaishali not afraid of the uh, of the rook on g8 we have queen to d7 and now b bishop captures on c6 capturing with the b pawn as it helps um, tanjogi improve her center and now pawn to f4 so it's a very very strange position where obviously if the, if there was anything here well it would be played more uh, but uh, vaishali prepared the um, uh, prepared uh, prepared it and uh, Tanjungi will have to show that he, she's able to find her way through uh, all the intricacies of the position so rook to b8 claiming the semi-open b file as well for her rook and now queen to f3 offering the b2 pawn uh, now you can capture it but it's not really a great capture uh, to, to explain why if you capture it then rook 8 to b1 now if you trade then white will be controlling the b file and why uh, uh, rook to b8 will always be a problem and if you play rook to b6 to kind of ask white are you maybe interested in capturing so i can even fix my pawn structure then you go a4 preparing a5 and if e5 uh, attacking in the center now you play a5 and now black will have to move the rook captures captures and uh, after let's say bishop to e7 you, you you cannot block with bishop to d8 uh, a6 and this is now very very annoying for black and now the rook can come to b7 the rook can come to b8 you will probably have to trade queens here let's say captures captures knight to e2 defend here and die after e captures you will go rook to b8 with check and after uh, bishop to d8 you will go knight to d4 and okay now this pawn is weak this pawn is weak the knight can come to f5 you have doubled pawns here uh white um, uh, should have a, a much nicer game so while you can capture on b2 you don't really gain anything by it so queen to g4 offering a queen trade and just pawn to b3 uh Im improving the position here saying okay if you want to trade you can trade by capturing the queen here and i will uh recapture with the rook but of course uh Tanjungi doesn't she goes to rook to b4 uh, rook a to d1 and now just pawn to a6 we have queen to f2 now the queen uh, trade is no longer on the table and while you are pressuring the a7 pawn you also have to defend checkmate on g2 so you can't move for the moment we have pawn to f5 and pawn to a3 chasing away the rook we have rook back to b7 and now rook to d3 now uh rook to g3 is a pretty big threat so you have to uh, take care of that and we have bishop to e7 now uh bishop to e7 how does bishop to e7 uh help you with uh, rook to g3 well if you go rook to g3 right away then bishop to h4 that is the idea uh, now uh, the, and nothing is really happening here if you capture the queen then bishop captures and f2 comes with check and you don't have to worry about rook captures and g8 coming with check once you capture here captures and of course uh, black will be uh, up the exchange and winning the game so instead after bishop to e7 we have king to h1 and now bishop to h4 still attacking the queen 
uh, queen to d2. Now you could trade queens here, it is very much possible. Uh, let's say h3, you trade here, bishop captures, h captures, the bishop's still hanging, you have to move the bishop. And now after, let's say g captures on f5, you will capture another pawn, black pushes d5, and okay, white is up a pawn, but has a doubled f pawn, and black has a, a bishop versus a knight. So white should probably be a little bit better, but nothing spectacular. So instead of I shall place queen to d2, keeps the queens in the game, and also puts pressure on that d6 pawn, and now pawn to d5, with pawn to h3, attacking the queen, queen to g6, with e captures on f5, queen captures on f5, and now knight to e2. Uh, uh, defending on, on f4, but also just getting ready to bring that knight over to uh, d4 to attack the queen, to put pressure on c6, and so on. So pawn to e5, stopping that, and now rook to e3, aligning the rook nicely with the black king. And now the only way to defend this is to play pawn to e4. But it was not played in the game here. Tanjungi played rook to e7, and now uh, Vaishali... Uh, takes over the game completely. She plays queen to b4. And now the threat is a, very, a fairly simple one. Rook, uh, queen to b8 to check will win the rook on g8. So you have to defend this somehow, either by moving the king or by defending the rook. Tanjungi defends the rook and now also threatens checkmate. But pawn to g4 defends against checkmate and now you still have to worry about all of these checks. Checks will pick up the pawn. You might lose this pawn at some point. Uh, this will create a passed a pawn. If you don't have anything on the king side, this will be very, very bad for Tanjungi. So she continues the attack, pawn to h5, with f captures on e5, h captures on g4, and only now queen to b8 with check. We have king to d7, queen captures on a7 with check, king to c8, and now queen to a8 with check. We have king to c7, and now again queen to a7 with check, king to c8, and queen to a6 with check. She repeated once, but now uh, she will continue, of course, king to c7, and now knight to f4, attacking the queen, and where can the queen go to? Uh, there are a couple of squares, but none of them really work, it doesn't matter if you go queen to g5, queen to g7, you could go queen to h6, you could go queen captures on c2, none of these uh, uh, work and the black just gets destroyed, whatever uh, she does. Uh, for example, if queen to g5, do you see how white wins on the spot? It's a fairly uh, straightforward idea, but uh, you know, maybe, maybe you don't see it, uh, you know, while well, I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, the move, of course, is knight captures on d5 with check. Uh, and now there's nothing uh, that you can do here. Uh, it's check and also the rook is attacked. Um, if you go something like uh, king to b, then rook e4. Of course, you're not going to give up the rook. Rook e4 followed by rook here. And if you take, it uh, doesn't really help you that much. Then comes rook to c3 with check. And after the king moves, you will play rook to c5. And you just get um, a checkmate. For example, rook to b7 will be met with queen to d6 check, king to a8, rook to a5 check, uh, rook to a7, queen to c6 check, king goes to b8, and now of course rook b5, only move rook to b7, and this will be checkmate. So uh, queen to g5 doesn't work. This is met the same, this is met the same, this is met the same, this is met the same. Uh, what can you play here? Queen to h7 was played, but again, it doesn't work. Uh, so here, Vaishali repeated once, uh, queen to a7 with check, king to c8, queen to a8 with check, king to c7, sorry, uh, king to d7, and now queen to b7 with check, king to d8, and now queen to b8 with check, king to d7, queen to b7 with check, king d8, and now queen captures on c6. Even though she could have gone for that knight captures on d5 idea, uh, she uh, decided to go for this, uh, I don't know, probably already the penultimate round after a, a grueling tournament, uh, you, you know, a spot in the candidates tournament is hanging in the balance. You don't want to over, over um, uh, calculate and then maybe maybe miss something. This is pretty straightforward and now you know that you will win this. Rook to c7 was played, now queen captures on d5 with check, king to e8 and now queen to a8 with check. Uh, bishop to d8, of course blocking and now rook to d1 going after the um, bishop this will be checkmate so queen to h4 defending the bishop here luckily uh, the h3 pawn is defended by the knight so you don't have to worry but now Vaishali finishes it off uh, with a very nice rook e to d3 and he was in this position on move 43 that Tanjongi resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here uh, the d8 bishop is attacked three times and that's all there is if you move the king to e7 uh, it, it's possible okay now the um, uh, bishop is defended by the by the rook as well but now it's not defended by the queen, so 
that doesn't really help you all that much. Uh, so yeah, here she, she resigned. There's no move you can play. You're getting checkmated, whatever you play. And uh, uh, Vaishali not only wins the tournament, she wins the uh, Women's FIDE Grand Swiss, but she also qualifies for the FIDE candidate, uh, Candidates Tournament. And uh, interestingly, uh, she qualifies for the Candidates Tournament as a international master. She's still not a, a Grand Master, even though she has uh, her three norms, but she's still not 20, 2500 rated. So once she reaches 2500, uh, she will uh, get her Grandmaster title. Uh, although uh, I, I think it's, um, if you guys remember when Bobby Fischer qualified for the FIDE, Grand, uh, FIDE Candidates Tournament, he was not a Grandmaster and uh, he was granted the title because it would be weird for not a Grandmaster to, to play in the Candidates Tournament. And while it is, I believe, the same for men's candidates now, I, I, I think you don't get uh, the, the title right away if you qualify for, for the Women's Candidates Tournament. I could be wrong, but I, I, I don't think you do. Uh, but yeah, yeah, she does have her norms, and once she reaches, uh, she got like over 30 rating points in this tournament, so she will break 2500 uh, fairly quickly. And uh, she, and uh, th these are the opponents that she faced, uh, so uh, she played uh, uh, an immaculate tournament, not a single loss. She started with uh, a win against Olivia Kiobasa, then a draw against uh, Alina Rubars. For those of you who are following women's chess, know how strong uh, these um, uh, women are. I mean, uh, they're playing absolutely incredible chess. They're just crushing everyone. So uh, Vaishali de de defeating them or, or, or you know even even playing against them is uh, is really awesome. Then uh, against uh, Maria Muzichuk and Anna Muzichuk, she got a draw and the win. Uh, Alexander Goryachkina a draw. Bibisara Saibayeva also uh, a win. Um, uh, Sophie Millier of, of France. It was a really crazy game. Everything was hanging there. Uh, that that was a draw. Then she defeated Antonetta Stefanova. Then Tanjungi. Uh, and uh, well, pretty pretty incredible tournament. Uh, in the tournament, uh, she faced um, uh, three participants of the of the women's candidates tournament that will be playing in 2024, and she got two draws and a win against them. So if she will play like this, uh, or or maybe even a little bit better, as the candidates tournament is next year, she could even be the the favorite to play in the uh, women's FIDE candidates tournament. So for now, uh, if you don't know who is uh, currently qualified for the women's FIDE. Candidates tournament. We have uh, I think July. She qualified through the uh, uh, last um, uh, World Chess Championship cycle as she was the runner-up. Then the top two finishers of the Women's Grand Prix, uh, Katarina Lahno and Alexandra Goryachkina. Then the top three finishers uh, of the Women's uh, Chess World Cup, Nurgo Salimova and uh, uh, Anna Muzichuk. Uh, and then you have the uh, top two finishers of this tournament, the uh, FIDE Women's Grand Swiss, uh, Vaishali and Tan Jungi. Tan Jungi uh, actually won third place, um, uh, Anna Muzichuk won second place, but as she qualified before, uh, the the spot goes to Tan Jungi. Uh, one more uh, one more player will be decided. Whoever will be the highest rated player on the January list of 2024, same uh, same as in the open section. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Very nicely done uh, by Vaishali choosing this uh, uh, line that uh, sort of doesn't uh, offer that much, but you have to play very, very precise. Uh, I mean, this knight captures on c6 and bishop captures on f6, uh, but you have to play very precise. And she just, you know, uh, she just uh, basically imposed her will on the former women's world champion. Uh, but yeah, something uh, so, something uh, uh, let's say Bobby Fischer used to do in the in the Rui Lopez, where he would uh, you know uh, capture with with uh, a bishop captures on c6. He would just take the knight, even though it was considered that it's nothing. Uh, he would still play it, and he would just crush people. So yeah. There we have it. Uh, very nicely done by Vaishali. Big congratulations on qualifying for the candidates tournament and uh, very soon, uh, I believe, getting her Grandmaster uh, title. Uh, I would like to thank Sam's Giant Tortoise Farm, Marvin Sparrow, uh, Gerhard Henkelman, uh, Per Forsal, uh, Love Marie, and India for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day. And I do have a nice photo of Vidit and Vaishali after the tournament here. If you guys want to uh, see if, if you haven't seen it, uh, let me just see if I can find it to end the video with that. Uh, since it's re it really is a nice one. Uh, yeah, here it is. OK, let's let's just check that out. Sorry, it's it's a bit large. Have to make it smaller. Yeah, we have a very nice photo. So. 
they both uh, they both won the tournament and they both qualified for the PDA candidates tournament 2024. Uh, see you soon.